So here's a reduction that you've already seen in chapter 16. I take a nitrobenzene and treat it with hydrogen gas and palladium carbon, and I can convert it into aniline. Is this an oxidation or a reduction? Well, I'm beginning here with a nitrogen that's bonded to two oxygen atoms, and I'm converting it into a nitrogen that's bonded to two hydrogen atoms. Thus, I've lost bonds to oxygen and gained bonds to hydrogen. So indeed, it is a reduction reaction. This reaction is new. We can see that if we begin with this kind of compound, a disulfide, and treat it with HCl and zinc, we actually cleave the bond between these two sulfur atoms and replace that with a bond to hydrogen. Is it a reduction or an oxidation? Once again, we can see that this process adds bonds to hydrogen to my beginning molecule. So thus, we can say, yes, it is a reduction reaction. This is another reaction that uh, we learned back in chapter 4. If I take an alkene and I treat it with bromine, I will add a single bromine atom to each of these two carbons. You might remember from chapter 4 that these bromine atoms always end up adding anti to each other. So the question is, once again, is this an oxidation or reduction? Well, this might not be quite as obvious as some of the others, because I'm not gaining bonds to hydrogen or losing bonds to oxygen. What am I doing then? Well, you'll see that as I go from the starting material to my product, I have lost a carbon-carbon double bond. Thus, we can say that this is a reduction reaction. Now we'll address the oxidation reactions covered in section 20.1. These first two should look familiar to you. We originally learned them back in chapter 10. If I take an aldehyde and I treat it with this dihydrogen chromate, chromic acid, I can oxidize it all the way up to a carboxylic acid. Now you heard me say the, the word oxidize. Is this really an oxidation? Well, what I've done is I've taken this molecule in which I've got a carbon that has two total bonds to oxygen, and I've converted it into a carbon that has three total bonds to oxygen, two up here and one down here. Is that an oxidation? Absolutely. Similarly, if I take a secondary alcohol like this and I treat it under the same conditions, I will convert it into a ketone like the one shown here. Now, this reaction is a little bit new. If I take a thiol and I treat it with nitric acid, I can actually convert it to this kind of compound, a sulfonic acid. Is this reaction an oxidation or is it a reduction? Well, you'll see that I begin here with this thiol and I convert it to a sulfur that is bonded to three separate oxygens. You'll see that by gaining bonds to oxygen, I have indeed oxidized the sulfur. So this reaction is an oxidation. Now you may ask, are we there yet, Professor Mike? No. Be quiet, students, or I will turn this lecture around. Yes, there are more reactions to learn, but these ones are all ones that we've covered in earlier chapters. As you may remember, if I begin with an alkene, treat it with hydrogen gas, and a palladium carbon or platinum catalyst, I add a bunch of hydrogens to this double bond, converting it to single bond alkane. Similarly, I can take an alkyne and treat it under the same conditions and once again convert it all the way down to an alkane. Is it an oxidation or reduction act reaction? Once again, I'm beginning with compounds that have either a carbon-carbon double bond or a carbon-carbon triple bond, and I'm losing those double or triple bonds and going all the way to carbon-carbon single bonds. Thus, by my definition shared earlier, it is a reduction reaction. This is a reaction that we've also covered. If you take an alkyne and treat it with hydrogen gas and Lindler catalyst, you may remember that Lindler catalyst is actually poisoned palladium, so it's not quite as reactive as the typical palladium carbon catalyst that we use up here. If I take Lindler catalyst hydrogen gas, react an alkyne under those conditions, I will put hydrogens onto the alkyne, reducing it to an alkene. You have to remember for this reaction that these conditions always give me a cis or Z alkene. The hydrogens always end up adding to the same face of the alkyne, thus they end up being on the same side. And here are some slight variations which are technically new, or new-ish anyway. Thus, if we take this kind of compound, this is a carbon doubly bonded to a nitrogen. You might remember from our previous chapter, this kind of compound is called an imine. 
I can take this imine and treat it with hydrogen gas and palladium carbon and add hydrogens to this double bond and convert it all the way to the singly bonded amine. Is that an oxidation or reduction? Well, I've lost a double bond and I've gained bonds to hydrogen, so it is indeed a reduction. Similarly, as we covered in the previous chapter, if I take this type of compound, a carbon nitrogen triple bond, which is called a nitrile, treat it with hydrogen gas and rainy nickel, I can also add hydrogens all over that, reducing it completely to a carbon nitrogen single bond found in this amine product. Here are some newish reactions as well. Aldehydes can also be reduced to primary alcohols by reacting them with hydrogen gas and rainy nickel. Similarly, a ketone can be reduced to a secondary alcohol under the same conditions. Are these reduction reactions? Absolutely. You'll see in my starting materials, I've got a carbon-oxygen double bond. And in my products, I've only got a carbon-oxygen single bond. Thus, this carbon has lost a net bond to oxygen. It is therefore being reduced. Similarly, if I take an acid chloride like the one shown here, and treat it with hydrogen gas and partially deactivated palladium, I can interconvert it into this aldehyde product, which is once again a very useful reaction. Now I hasten to mention that these carbonyl reduction reactions only work on aldehydes, ketones, and acid chlorides. Thus, if you try to take a carboxylic acid, or an ester, or an amide, and treat it with hydrogen gas and rainy nickel or deactivated palladium, you get absolutely no reaction. These compounds are too stable to be reduced under such mild conditions. Now you may remember this reaction from chapter 6. If I take an alkyne and I react it with sodium or li lithium and liquid ammonia, I can hydrogenate that alkyne, reducing it to an alkene, but do so in a way that gives me the trans or E alkene. This is contrasted with the reduction that I get of an alkyne using Lindler catalyst, which gives me the cis or Z alkene. This is a cool example. If I take this compound, which has an alkene in it and an alkyne, and I treat it under these conditions, you'll see that these conditions do not reduce or touch the alkene. They only reduce the alkyne, and they do so in a way in which those two hydrogens are trans to each other. Thus, this alkene product that I get is actually E relative to the alkene that has been reduced. We'll now turn to hydride reduction reactions, which you should be familiar with at this stage, because I already covered them back in chapter 18. Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. You might ask, why in the crap are we covering these reactions again? I don't know. Just shut up and listen. As we highlighted back in chapter 18, hydride reactions, as well as most of our carbonyl reactions from previous chapters, are kind of like a football to the groin. Thus, H minus, or hydride, comes in to this carbon, which is kind of like this crotch of my little stick figure, thrusting these electrons up onto the oxygen to give me this tetrahedral intermediate. The negatively charged oxygen then gets protonated to generate this alcohol shown here.